All right, hola, what is up everybody? Needless to say, we're working late today. My God, the birds. Uh, so we gotta go check out a walk-in freezer that has iced over. Now we're gonna do some checks. Obviously you're gonna be checking for heaters, uh, defrost times and anything else, airflow, stuff like that. How are you guys checking temperatures on different things, right? So I can quickly go over the different tools that you need, but one thing you probably should invest in is what I'm going to show you right now in a bit. And it's the way that I check a lot of my freezers and walk-in boxes and AC units uh, in the commercial building, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. All right, so I'm about, about to head out in a bit and uh, I'm going to show you real quick the uh, thermal camera. So we're going to go take care of the call in this video, but I'm going to show you a, how I use this thing to do a few checks here and there and why, you know, it's a good investment. I've actually tried a few different styles. If you guys are just looking for entry level, something affordable that you're not going to, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. You know, uh, this style right here is basically the one that you want to look for. And I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check this one out in particular. And if you have any questions on it or anything like that, I think this one has some cool features on it. Uh, it actually has a, an actual camera on it and the thermal imager uh, two in one. So you get a better picture if you need that. So thermal camera sensing beyond visible. So again, you can find leaks with this. So water leaks, things in the wall, um, heat infiltration, like the, it, it's limitless what you can really do with it in the HVAC world. So I'm just gonna quickly show you this one and then we'll get to the job site and kind of get to work. And like I was saying, there's two cameras in here and this one has the, uh, the little laser pointer as well if you need that indicator and uh, you just power it on and there you go. So let's take this out. Uh, you have a power brick, the cable, it's USB, it, it's rechargeable, it's USB-C, not a big deal, no batteries needed. And uh, yeah, it comes with the adapter that you would need. Pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, this one's not too bad as far as size. So let's get out there and uh, see what's going on with that freezer. It's always on a Friday afternoon when these ice buildup calls come in as if they didn't know that they had that issue. So. Let's check it out. Actually, I had to make a pit stop getting over here. One of the guys came and already defrosted it, I believe. So we're just going to start it back up and do a check on it because a uh, fan motor was changed out recently and the, they don't know why it's icing up. The customer said it's iced up a few times over, I don't know, a week or so. So like every couple of days it'll ice up according to them. All right, funny enough, it is in defrost. So don't burn your hand, get a thermal imager and check, make sure all the heaters are good. So now we're gonna go on the roof and kick it out, turn it back on and check our pressures, superheat, all that. All right, so far I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary for the uh, unit to be icing up. Let's kick it out. And hook up. I'm not sure where that noise is coming from. That is loud. But uh, I'll show you on screen. Um, I'm gonna record really quick on the thermal camera, the E2. Uh, so as you can see here, our crankcase heater is working. And you can see our discharge line there. And if you have like a bypass valve on that side, you can do that too. You can check that over there. Our temp is just a little bit high, but it's not horrible. It is a freezer. Um, I'm gonna get information off that motor and just kind of recommend that 
for uh, I need to check the temp. Kind of let that level off and uh, see if we can get a reading real quick. So this is sweating, but I don't know how cold it is. Jesus. I'm trying to see if I can see any liquid going through there. I mean, I hope it's not overcharged. Thank you for glue or spraying that. Another thing you can check here is uh, your disconnect. So if you have any loose connections or bad breakers, bad disconnects and uh, contacts, all that kind of stuff. Contactors, you can check contactors too. So it's another use for a thermal imager here. So just want to verify that. Uh, a lot better than the good old uh, finger test. All right, so I turned it off to do a uh, check downstairs. I think we're okay over here. It's showing me uh, high superheat, but I want to check it at the TXV. And uh, we can, you know, adjust that if need be. This up here is just going to get ridden up for a motor and a coil cleaning if i have a chance i'll rinse it today but i need to get inside and see what temp we got and also you know and i also want to adjust the fans a little bit because they were just replaced i don't know if they're sitting properly so i'm going to take a look at that real quick actually have no port here so I'm going to do it separate. We got the clamp here and the pressure probe on top. And this bad boy right here to check our temp. I should probably put it in the back but this is, I just need a quick reading. Can you guys see the fan? 
stopping, so yeah, that's a bearings. I'll show the guy. He's asking me if it's, or he's telling me that it's been like that, but obviously it's gonna, it's gonna fail. Most likely on the weekend. Good God, I had to get away from there. Uh, restarted it, it went down to 80, or in the 80s, so let's see when that coil dries off where it's at. I have a tank that I brought up that is almost empty. I just wanna see if we can top it off um, and get our pressure to where it needs to be after it dries and maybe this comes back up. Uh, but I need to get rid of that tank anyway, so let's just empty that little few ounces that we have in it. Wait, the, the door is closing fine, but is the gasket good? All right, so actually, you know, not enough to be, or to make me worried. Uh, the door's closing fine, so I'm not gonna really uh, focus, hyper-focus on that. That's another good instance. Uh, I think I, I don't know, heat infiltration, whether you're checking a building and they're, they're wondering, you know, the, the unit's running, but it doesn't feel comfortable, or there's still a lot of heat, hot spots, you can go around with a thermal imager to check that and then on the refrigeration side you want to make sure your boxes are sealed so again gaskets on on any even reach ins and stuff your gaskets on like the walk-in doors um, I've had some that the boxes the walk-in boxes are outside and they got a lot of either condensation inside or growth or uh, you know there's some funny stuff going on and you go walk around or walk through with an uh, infra, a thermal imager and you can see that the box is deteriorating or it's uh you know one of the panels is messed up insulation you know stuff like that so another good instance for a thermal imager so i have to get the motor it is friday evening i'm not going to be able to get it i don't even want to bother to get it to have somebody open a supply house and be here all night and go through all that so i'm going to take the weekend to rest we'll be back there will probably be will be a part two we'll come back put the motor in make sure everything's good i did get better airflow after moving the fan blades back i felt like they were too forward they were in front of like the the shroud the little lip part so that helped and i didn't i never got ice i've been here a couple hours i never got ice or any sort of build up my txv wasn't even ice enough or anything crazy it was barely frosting and i had a even frost pattern all the way on the back so you know nothing major and then i i adjusted the txv it's already been messed with so i ended up opening it out and then kind of closing it to get the superheat that i wanted which we were right at like right under 10. it, it fluctuated eight to nine i didn't want to mess with it too much but it'll drop the last time i checked it was when it was at 17 degrees it is now 13 degrees. It's pretty good. There's no ice. I added a few more defrost times just as a fail safe. It does have the termination hooked up from what I can tell, but uh, it's an old system. It's pretty beat up and uh, it's missing like every cover to every part in there. All right, so real quick, I have a Windows PC and a MacBook. Not sure how it goes on the MacBook. I can get it to pick it up. Here under my PC, it's under a camera. You click it, you got internal storage and you should be able to find, just be aware that you have to download this thermal tools off their website. So if you go to their guide IR website, go to uh, service, and downloads, scroll down to software for PC. If you guys are on mobile, they have Android ones. I'm not sure if the iOS one is working. 
and it is a thermal tools uh, temperature measurement. You download that, it's a big file, and then uh, you have to download and install this uh, software. All right, the only way I got it to work is in the settings, go all the way down, go to AP mode, make sure that is on, and it's gonna give you, it's basically, basically like a hotspot that this camera is giving off. Go to your Wi-Fi and connect to that. And basically how I got here was air import. And then choosing AP, going to this IRGD and downloading all those. So like I said, air import is right there. And then I'm gonna go down after it finishes to videos. Here we go. And these should be all of them. All right, so once you get them imported, you wanna double click. This is the video. Click export. Select video. Change the format to MP4 and then pick the, so pick the folder you want and then X or confirm. And then open the folder and here you go. That's the easiest way that I've figured it out. It's a little bit of a, a setup. And then at least on a Windows PC, that's how you can do that. You guys want to pick that up handheld trigger style and uh, you get the because you can see that there's a camera sensor right there. So it's a camera, a two megapixel camera right here. You got your infrared camera right here, thermal imager. You have a laser pointer and then you got a flash. I didn't know that's what that was. It's a flash. So when you point it uh, somewhere, you actually get uh, a flashlight with it. So optimal for the best picture possible. You can change the color palette, the the units. Um, it is Wi-Fi compatible. Uh, usually that's so you can take the pictures off of the camera and, and download them to your phone. It does photo and video so you can take the photos you need to or actually record something in real time if you have something going on where you need a video of the thermal imager. And again, with those two cameras on there, that's what makes it unique because most don't have that, that two megapixel camera, you know, to, to give you that quality because it's overlapping the two images. So you can take just photos if you need to, if you want to use this as your uh, image, you take images for work and you, you know, you're going to be looking for thermal, um, whether it's hot, hot wires, hot contacts, breakers, uh, loose connections, uh, water leaks, heaters, you know, the list goes on and on vents, returns, supplies. You can uh, check all of that. I've checked, uh, even bypass valves and, and things like that with a good thermal imager. So, you can take pictures without the thermal imager. So you can take just regular photos if you need to take photos of the equipment. Granted, it's at two megapixels, I believe. And you can then take a picture of the thermal image. You can also, you know, you have to change it in the in the settings, but you can also get them lapped over each other. So you can kind of tell what you're taking a picture of because it's very hard to to tell when it's just all colors. So you can overlap them or you can do the picture in picture um, and do it that way. Whatever you need to do, it, it's pretty uh, convenient and uh, versatile as far as like what you can do with it. Check it out if you're in the market for one. I'll leave it in the description how you can get it. And uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you guys.